pray, O God, that your Holy Spirit will guide us as we look into this portion. We pray, Lord, your help. We pray, Lord, your understanding. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen. Amen. So Hebrews 12 began with looking unto Jesus and ended with what? The glorious assembly. Reaching up to heaven. We're not there yet, of course. But that was, that's what was happening. That's what he was telling those uh, early Hebrew Christians that they were to look to Jesus. And of course the future was bright because they were looking to go into heaven one day to be with him. Where those great men of the past were that we read of in chapter 11. And uh, it is the glorious assembly because that is the final place. That is really where we're heading for. That is the goal. Where there be no more sin and no more sadness and as we're singing there will be. And the great desire and prayer is to be more like Jesus. Oh. So today really we're going to look at what is brotherly love? What is brotherly love? And we thank Sam for reading the Bible in Hebrews chapter 13, 1 to 6. And the page of course there is 1728 in the church Bible. So, what is brotherly love? We're going to look at that. And the answer here in these first few uh, verses, uh, we're going to answer that, you see here, in these uh, four different ways. So, brotherly love is hospitality. And brotherly love is remember the prisoners. Many people in prison in the world today. Uh, brotherly love is fidelity. That's faithfulness. Uh, to your marriage partner. And then brotherly love is contentment. Uh, and then that contentment comes in, it means that it'll really be the final thing for all those things. So we were interesting r r singing and thinking about our Heavenly Father and uh, the great love that He has, how deep the Father's love for us to send Jesus. Right, so brotherly love, first of all, is hospitality. All right, let brotherly love continue. And that's important, and that was a challenge for those uh, early Christians and those Hebrew Christians, uh, and particularly Jews, because the Jews are a tough people, they're nearly as tough as the Irish. And, and, uh, and they're very, 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 very aggressive and very challenging, uh, and there's no messing about. As we say in Ireland, we call a spade a spade. You know, that's it. We don't call a spade a shovel. We call a spade a spade. And, and uh, maybe you don't understand that from different countries, but, you know, that's, that's the way it is. And uh, you, you, you find, you know, but there, there is. So I, talking to myself, talking to Jews, you know, they're, not all, they're all, again, they'll be different, but usually they're quite... Uh, challenging and the book of James will tell you uh, more about them because that deals on on the earth where they all want to be masters and they all want to control one another and you, that should not be he says you know and uh, and of course it's this area of brotherly love uh, is so important and so let brotherly love continue he says with them that will be important for them now as he comes to the close of this chapter so we might ask that, well, why? Why was that? Well, it's really love for the unsaved, for the Jew and the Gentile too. Now, they might be under pressure. Their, their Jewish neighbours might not like them. But you see, it's love for them, even though for the unsaved Jew. And then the Gentiles too could have problems with them as well. And of course... They will have to love them as well. That's not easy. That's very challenging, uh, especially those who hurt you, you know, uh, and, and uh, spitefully use you and persecute you. But Jesus says, uh, great is your reward in heaven, even though that may happen. And that's interesting, isn't it? Uh, and so, what about our motto we have there in the first? I hope everyone... We got our motto. Maybe, maybe some people are missed. If not, there's still one here. And their motto is, 
And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. And I think we talked about that at the early part of the year. And if you haven't got one of them, we're still one. We can still almost get one, you know. And, and that's our motto. It's not easy to follow. And I've been challenged greatly uh, uh, about, you know, even though we've, uh, the Lord directed us to, to that, particular po that particular verse, that section, it's still very challenging. And so, and so we are to consider one another and is to provoke or to uh, encourage one another, or to spur one another on, I think the NIV is, to love and good deeds. Yeah. So it's hospitality, isn't it? It's next time. Eh? It's hospitality. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing some have unwittingly entertained angels. <gasps> Who are they? Who do you think unwittingly entertained angels and find out maybe they were a bit more than an angel? Well, of course, who? There was Abraham and Sarah and they had a meal for them. There was three angels came. Well, of course, Abraham addressed one of them as the Lord and he accepted that. Right, that was what we call a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ. Appearance of Christ before his, in, in a bodily form, before his uh, birth. Pre-incarnate. And then there was Gideon, another man who, who, who met the Lord, an angel. And of course we see, and then Manoah and his wife. So there it is. Gideon didn't seem to have a wife at that time. But uh, uh, the Lord met with him, and uh, Manoah, and his wife. So uh, that was, of course, to be the, the mother and father of Samson. But uh, anyway, we'll only think of one of them anyway. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread, and lay them on this rock. This is what he brought out to give him for food. For this, this what he was doing, and so unleavened bread, and lay them on this rock, and pour out the broth, and he did so. So he laid them on the rock, and he poured out the broth that he had made, and he did so. And what happened then? Then the angel of the Lord put out his the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread and fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread and the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. That gives you a little idea of uh, when an offering was made to God and God accepted it by fire. Another one that happened it was Elijah. And so God accepted his offering the angel of the Lord there was, of course, again, a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ. And the angel of the Lord, capital is there, of course, shown, do you see, is the pre-incarnate appearance of Christ. So it's amazing, isn't it? So that is the hospitality that they, they gave there. And, and uh, uh, there it is now. So it's nice when people give hospitality to one another. Uh, and... Uh, then we think of brotherly love is remember the prisoner. Remember the prisoners, not just prisoner. It's the prisoners. There's so many of them all over the world. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them. Those who are mistreated, and they are terribly mistreated, especially in like uh, Eritrea, where they're in these tunnels uh, and they don't have a toilet, they have a bucket in the corner. And there they are for years, uh, and no, no light a day. You know, it's about freezing at night. Uh, I can't remember what it's under, but it's away under. It's freezing at night. 20 maybe. I don't think it'd go to 20 under, but even 10 under, uh, 5 or 10 under is, is terrible. And then it goes up in the middle of the day then to 50. So there's that 
awful change of temperature in that awful condition. And that's the only one of the places in the, country, in the world uh, they want that. They're scared of the, uh, the uh, a, uh, a President Isaac Afuerti or something like that. He, he is uh, scared of Christians. I mean, he, doesn't, he, he thinks they're going to take over the country. But they're there for the good of the country and they can't see that. Just the same as in Uzbekistan too as well. They won't, but there they are, they're scared of them. Well, here's this. In more than 40 nations around the world today, Christians are being persecuted for their faith. In some of these nations, it is illegal to own a Bible, to share your faith in Christ, change your faith, or teach your children about Jesus. That's basically the situation in the world today. This is, each uh, century is getting worse and in this particular one it is really bad, it's the worst so far. It's getting worse all the time but then that is the promise that would happen because it's also pointed the fact that Jesus is coming if things get really terribly bad. It's bad enough and as terrible as it is they have recently found uh, another grave of uh, a executed uh, prisoner, uh, people in uh, ISIS prisoners in, in uh, Syria. And we don't know much uh, about it other than that. And so there it is. Those who boldly follow Christ, in spite of government edict or radical opposition, can face harassment, arrest, torture and even death. Yet, Christians continue to meet for worship and to witness for Christ. And the church is and the church in restricted nations are growing. Growing, amazingly. The house church is in, in Iran. Iran is a great prophecy. Elam would be a big turning in, in the last days. And there's a turning amongst the Jews. These two things are showing the fulfilment of prophecy, you see. But of course the leaders of these could not have it. Brotherly love is fidelity. Uh, and the verse there is for that, maybe you don't understand the word fidelity, but it's being faithful, faithful in marriage. Or, uh, marriage is honourable among all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. So it's God's word, and, and what, you know, we were praying already this morning is that the marriage, the family, is under attack, and that is a terror. You know, the devil is busy, and even, uh, you know, it used to be, not in Christian circles, but now it is, and, and the devil is attacking so badly. So Christian homes are under attack. And how does the church respond? The glue is the Bible and prayer. Back to the Bible and prayer. You know. No quick fix. Nothing easy. But it's the Bible and prayer. And you know it tells us in Ecclesiastes 4.12 A threefold cord is not quickly broken. They do use that in a marriage ceremony sometimes. What's the threefold card? Well, they say that three in a marriage is not so good, is it? It's a problem, eh? But in this case, in a Christian marriage, the husband and wife and Jesus is really a good threefold card. And it's not easy broken. If you keep Jesus in the centre, that would be important, you know. And whatever happens, you know, uh, I, was, I was told that only one argument is allowed. And not keep it early in the night. Not at, uh, we were told at college, no arguments after 10 o'clock, no new subjects after 10 o'clock. Uh, only one argument allowed. What is that? Well, you see, I say that 
Rita loves me more than I love her. <laughs> That's the only argument you can have. And that was what Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones and his wife said. That's their argument. Uh, he said that she loved him and she would have none of it. No, no! You love me more than I love you. So that was the, that was the right and long-standing argument. Maybe your marriage got messed up. But of course, God is the one who is working in these things, you know. And you need to bury yourself in the Word of God. Why do I say that? You know this lady, Johnny Erickson, she's never got the name added on to it, Tada. Married a man called Mr. Tada. And uh, Johnny Erickson, of course, was a quadriplegic. That meant she had a diving accident and uh, broke her special uh, cord here at the back of her neck and, and was a, a quadriplegic. Has been a quadriplegic now for the rest of her life. Confined in a wheelchair, was in her striker frame in hospital and wanted somebody to kill her. He gave her the medicine. If she couldn't do it herself, she would have done it. Uh, but she wanted, she heard about healing and prayer, and she wanted prayer, and she heard about John 14 and saying, greater works can you do if you believe in me? And of course, she thought, well, go to a healing meeting and we'd get healed. But you see, God didn't heal her out of the wheelchair, he healed her in the wheelchair for a purpose. Because in the wheelchair she could reach far more of the people in wheelchairs than she could out of the wheelchair. And she said, oh, she says, I wouldn't want to give up my Jesus for be out of the wheelchair if it changed things. And so uh, Johnny, um, she buried herself in the Word of God to find out the answer. What was the answer? Well, you see, Jesus healed many people. But you see, they might have got sick again or, or died. When Lazarus was, was raised from the dead, he would die again. He'll have to wait, like all of us, for the resurrection. Not. You see, what was the greater works then? Well, the greater works is that a soul is saved is saved for eternity. A person healed is only temporary because they're going to die one day. But a person saved is saved for all eternity. And how was the greater works then? Well, the greater works was when Peter stood at Pentecost and preached repentance and faith in Jesus Christ that what? 3,000 were found new life. Delivered from that. Oh, wasn't that wonderful? And so they were delivered from that. And, and, uh, and that was the great work. Because that was healed for all eternity. Spiritual healing and healed for all eternity. And that's what Johnny Erickson realised. And that's what she's telling people, especially those in wheelchairs and those who are handicapped. You know. So what is the answer? Well, it's the family manual, isn't it? The family manual. The Word of God. The basic instruction before leaving earth. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And you know, we shouldn't point the finger. Because, you see, it really speaks to each one of us. And, and, and the, the most people, uh, the way say men, are more guilty of this, you know. And uh, so, and the great problem is, of course, spiritual adultery. Then it's pointing to, isn't it? Because that's, that's, you know, and that's what happened to Israel. They committed spiritual adultery. And, uh, and that's important to think about that. So, we looked at brotherly love is hospitality. 
And brotherly love is remember the prisoner. And brotherly love is fidelity. Learning that. It's a big lesson to learn there in these days. And brotherly love is contentment, finally. Contentment. You know, to, it's, it's great gain. It's a great blessing to be contented with life. But it's not easy. Let your conduct be without covetousness, it says. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. And so the contented with, you know, with your brother, uh, contented with different things uh, uh, and all that, you see, and, and enjoying hospitality and uh, he, all those, uh, even Joseph was contented in prison and he was used there by God in the Old Testament. And uh, uh, all that you learn, you see, in life, conducted, con uh, you know, let you, you know, you're um, contented with life and contented with the things in life. You know, but sometimes we always go on to look for something more and something better. Uh, you know, uh, so there it is. Let's go on from there. You see, discontentment leads to sin. You know, you might get discontented, get discontented with our cars. You want a better car, eh? You want, you want a, what do you call it? Uh, this this lady says, I love my hybrid, my to Toyota hybrid. Oh, no more plug-ins, no more nothing. Oh, it's so wonderful, it's so great. And I'm going to do, what will I do? Well, I get alone. I'll, I'll do something. I'm going to have this car. I'm so coveted and wanted and desire it and maybe run, the person runs himself into debt to get it. I want, and of course it goes on and on. I want, I want, I want, etc., etc. Many different things, isn't it? Be content. And so pray for contentment. Contentment is great gain, you know. Pray for that. Will, will, you, will, that, will that make you any happier, you see? If you get something, will it make you any happier in life? That's the main thing, isn't it? Will that fulfill your uh, life and will that be good for you? Uh, of course, God wants us to, our uh, needs met, but not our greeds, you know. He, he, uh, he, he was dealing, Jesus was dealing with that in the people there on the Sermon on the Mount. And he said, you're not to worry about tomorrow. You're not to get over anxious about tomorrow. For uh, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Wait till tomorrow, leave that for itself. Why, why did he say that? He was because he didn't want them worrying what? Ulcers on their tummy. And the more you worry, if worry then is what? It's a sin. Because you are to pray. The farmer's wife, she was worried about what was happening and she complained to her husband that no work was getting done on the farm and oh it was terrible, you know. And she came, you know, and, and she said the neighbours have got the crops all saved and the hay's made and they're all in uh, uh, and the corn's there cut and stacked and you have nothing done ha ah, he says to her took the clothes in at me back you live a man when the rest has none <laughs> so there we are maybe you don't understand that and but there it is hey eh? so the main thing is don't be covetous don't be I'm sure she was a good wife and wanted all that, all her, her the work done, you know. Uh, but there it was, you see. So the main thing is don't be covetous. And uh, laziness, of course, is a sin too, isn't it? So four things to encourage us. You know, there, brotherly love. All relating to brotherly love, aren't they? That's the great thing, you see. They're all, uh, all bound up in that. And God loves us, you know, doesn't he? How can I do it? How can I manage to have this brotherly love and this care? I can't do it in my own strength, uh, you know. 
I'm sure that wife oh, oh, didn't really love her husband, did you say, her lazy husband, eh? Well, you see, you can be bold, can't you? And that's not the Irish meaning for bold, a uh, bold boy they talk about. But to be bold it means to be what? It means confident. This holy boldness. Confidence with God. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Now the, the young ones heard all about the, the helper on Friday, didn't they? This helper. But so so we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. And that was a special word for those Hebrew Christians. And it's a special word for anybody in the world today. Don't uh, the fear of man, the Bible tells us, or Proverbs says, what's a spare, isn't it? So, threefold concernment. Friends, in closing, I want to think about this threefold concernment. We thought about the threefold cord. That was different, but here now this is the threefold concernment. Whatever could that be? There's three tireless workers working for you. Are you going to enlist them? How are they doing it? Who are they? You could ask any kind of number of questions. Threefold concern. There's three people concerned for you. There's three tireless workers concerned for you who are working for you day and night and they don't sleep. Never sleep. They never slumber nor sleep. As someone said, Why am I up awake all night worrying and you see, reminded that the Good Shepherd, he never slumbers or sleep. And he's awake all the time. Why should I be up awake sleep, uh, and not sleeping? You see, put it into his hand. He's the one who cares for you. And you see, it's for your whole life. So who are these? Well, it's what? The Father, Heavenly Father. You call him your Heavenly Father? Jesus asked us to address him, our Father, our Heavenly Father, our Righteous Holy Father, our... You address him like that in prayer? Don't let him come across your words or lips at other times, but only in prayer to him. The threefold concernment is our Heavenly Father and the Son, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're all tireless workers. And is this for your whole life? This is for your whole life. This is the only concern. How deep the Father's love for us we sang. How great beyond all measure that he should send his only Son to make me a wretch. His treasure. He wants to bring us into his treasure house, his home. He wants to make us his treasure. You want to be his treasure? That's so wonderful, isn't it? That's so great. This brotherly love is for your whole life. Because this passage, few verses, deals with our whole life, doesn't it? For he himself, our elder brother, He's our elder brother, you see, in the family of God, Jesus Christ. Said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Can you take that promise? Can you come to it? Can you have it? Can you accept it? Can you plead for it? Can you say, oh, I must hold on to this. This is a promise from God. If there's anything in this passage I've heard today, I want this. I want to hold, I never leave you, nor forsake you, he says. Your elder brother in the faith. He, he's got these titles, you know, uh, of different things. They, they, the firstborn from the dead, the qualities of that. But the elder brother, you know, the elder brother took the 
they uh, in Israel took the whole um, what do we call it the responsibility of the family if the parents died. And here in this particular situation, you see, he is the same, and he died and rose again to be to save us. How amazing, isn't it? How wonderful! How, how great he is! You see, that's why we have these people. What is brotherly love? Oh, it's, it's centered in God himself. You see. That's why it is. There is really the Father's plan. The Father's plan to save you. The Father's plan to work it out. There's Father's plan in some way to bring it about. Then it will happen. And one day we think, oh, that happened. And now I believe. Oh, that's interesting. That's amazing. It's the Father's plan. The Father has planned our salvation right from the foundation of the world. And the Son's purchases. He came to purchase it. That he should send his only son to make a richest treasure. We're all riches, you know. No, we don't like that. We all have sinned against him. And so the son came to purchase our salvation, to, to redeem us, to buy us back again. That's the great love he had. And then the provision. Well, it's a great provision there. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. What a promise, he says. And when he's hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. The payment of a debt. He's paid the debt against us. See, there's the debt to God against us. And he, Jesus said, they can't do it. I'll go and die for them. I'll pay for it. So that anyone who takes on the bargain and believes in him and trusts in him can have it have this provision and say and hold on to this promise I never leave you nor forsake you. What a provision to save us. What a provision that he keeps us. What a wonderful saviour. And then we're left with what? The Holy Spirit's pleading. He's the worker. And we heard <coughs> already on, on Friday didn't we? About the Holy Spirit coming down to be alongside us our helper. He's our paraclete in the Greek. A paraclete is really one that comes alongside to help. Oh, my friends, you know, I think away back to Colchester, and I was visiting in, a, in an old people's home, and they said, come to see this old lady. She was about 107. And this old lady, I came to beside her, and I was talking to her, and she said, the helper, the Holy Spirit is there right beside me. Right there. Right alongside her. Spiritually speaking. Very challenging. Very moving. For a lady of 107. Wasn't moaning and groaning about her aches and pains. But she says the Holy Spirit is right alongside me. Right there. You know. And she believes it. And I believed her. She was known to be a dear old lady and very much respected. Uh, no big excitement or anything like that. But I'm sure she had prayed many a soul into the kingdom. And so the Holy Spirit's pleading. The Holy Spirit pleading with us. To what? The Holy Spirit is to speak of Christ. And to present Christ to you. And to plead with you and say, Will you not accept what he's done? Will you not take him at his word? Will you not? Now commit your life to Jesus Christ. And he pleads. He's the helper. He's the wonderful one. Oh yes, he's very shy in the background. But he's still sent down from heaven. Jesus went there and sent him down from heaven, we're told on Friday too. So was that he would be alongside us and with us. There to work with us. 
He's very shy, but he can be grieved. And so we have to keep close account with him. And uh, remember our work with God, our close work with God, as he calls us in to be his brothers and sisters. I should have said now, this is a general term. This brotherly love is for sisterly love too. It means it's a broad term. Sisters and brothers, and we're all one in Christ Jesus, and we? There's neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And that is important, isn't it? And to remember, the Holy Spirit is pleading. He says, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. My friends, underline that. That's an important verse. That was so very important to those suffering Hebrew Christians. And we aren't suffering or we are going through anything. It's a wonderful verse to come. The Lord is my helper. Oh, it's tough. Oh, I was going through the fire. I was, it was difficult. But Lord, you're my helper. Bob, call you out of that. So we want to thank you for viewing. And if you're watching wherever you are, we pray that God will bless. Bless pray. Our gracious God, we thank you for your blessings. We pray, Lord, your hand upon us. We thank you for these great three persons of the Godhead who are working on our behalf, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we pray, Lord, that we'll be ever mindful of enlisting them because they are qualified to do the work for us. No one else is qualified. No one else can do it. But we thank you that you have sent them. We pray your blessing and we thank you Heavenly Father for the work of the Son on the cross. We thank you for the help of the Holy Spirit who is here with us. Forgive us Lord where we fail Lord. Help us not to grieve you. Help us not to uh, you know forget about you and help us Lord to trust and follow you. We ask it in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ and to him be the glory and the praise. Now as we say the grace together, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.